So, I have a new daily, <laughs> and it's flipping sick. <laughs> That is the throb of a turbocharged flat four engine. A sound which all over the world heralds the imminent arrival of a moron. Yo guys, welcome back to Left Foot TV. So today um, I am gonna introduce you to my new daily driver. So if you followed the channel for a few, for, well, for a while, I've had my Volkswagen LT28 for about a year, year and a half now. And I bought it basically because I was working really far away from home and I was staying in it a couple of nights a week. And at the time when I bought it, it was really practical and useful for what I needed. And once I left that job, it became just a bit of a pain to own, to be honest with you. It wasn't very good on fuel. Well, it was horrendous on fuel. And daily driving it, it just wasn't that practical. It was it was obviously quite expensive to maintain because you, you got like van tires, which are more expensive. And with it being an old van, stuff was going wrong with it. Um, so I decided to sell it and get something a bit more practical. I, I really liked having the space that was in the van. Yeah, being able to like stay away in it, which was really cool. So it kind of like led me on down the thought of getting a, an estate car that I could maybe like convert the back so that I can, well, not convert the back, but make something that so that I could sleep in the back of it if I needed to. And yeah, just something that was still quite quick and fun um, to drive, which kind of led me down this rabbit hole of looking at Foresters. I used to have a Forester STB years ago and I, I loved it. it. It went absolutely everywhere. Um, me and my, my friend Ben went on loads of snow adventures in it and it just never, never let me down anywhere. And yeah, it was just an awesome car. So I started looking at Foresters. One came up on eBay and it, it just went and I forgot to bid on it <laughs> and it went so it went super cheap for what it was because it was an import as well yeah and I just missed the end of it so I'd I kind of given up I, I was just like I'll see if something comes up and obviously because I've been looking at Foresters on Facebook marketplace this Subaru just popped up on Facebook marketplace it'd been listed about an hour and I was like surely this thing can't be that price um it had a full year's MOT on it and I thought I've got to go and see this now. So I messaged the girl that had it up for sale and she's, she was like, it's not my car, it's my dad's car. Um, he doesn't have Facebook. So she gave me his number, I rang him and obviously it was like an, an older gentleman. <laughs> um, so he, yeah, he was really nice. And I think he, he knew the, well, he knew it was a Subaru, but not really to the extent of what it actually was. And I was like, I need to go and look at this thing tomorrow before it goes. So I went down the next day, three hour drive. He was really honest to me over the phone, told me everything that was wrong with it. And I got there, I had a good, good look around it. Cause I was like, I, I don't want to buy this thing if it's going to be issues. So I had a good look around it. There was a few little faults, but nothing major. Yeah, I ended up taking it home, <laughs> buying it. And it was so, so cheap. So it was roughly about the same price I was going to buy the Forester for, which will probably give you an idea of how much it is because Foresters don't go for very much money. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll flip the camera around now and show you what it is. So here it is. It's a, a WRX wagon, not just any WRX wagon. This 
was a very special one. So the Hawkeye never came as an STI estate, at least not in the UK anyway. There might be some special Japanese one I don't, I don't know about. I'm not that hot <laughs> on Imprezas, but I'm pretty sure the wagon was only available as a WRX in the UK in the Hawkeye. They did a limited run of 300 saloons and 100 wagons as a UK 270 by Pro Drive. Um, which was basically a special edition one that came on pro, like ProDrive Springs. It was tuned by ProDrive to push it up to 270 horsepower. And this is, this is one of them. So this is a one of 100 car that I picked up super, super cheap, like way cheaper than it was. To kind of put it in perspective of how cheap it was, the cheapest one I can find after this one for sale is six times the price <laughs> um, it has a little less miles on it and it's in a little in quite a bit better condition but yeah the cheapest one i can find is six times the price of this um so i got it super super cheap i'm not going to make the mistake of saying how much i'd paid for it because then i have a nightmare trying to sell the car at the end of the end of it all but yeah it is a gb270 pro drive edition and yeah they're quite special. So um, it came with different interior with the GB270 um, embroidery, different mats. Um, there was a few little different pieces like the spoilers. Um, like I mentioned before, it came on ProDrive Springs. This is the best part <laughs> is they obviously were numbered one to a hundred and uh, mine is 69. Nice. I'm so, so happy with it. Um, Obviously I got it cheap, so it's not the most immaculate example out there, but for the price I paid for it, I'm, I, I'm really, really happy with it. And so there is a few little issues with it that I'll go around now. Um, obviously the wing, it's got some rust and stuff coming through down here and um, it has been painted before. You can probably see in the camera and hear <laughs> that it's been painted with a rattle can, I think, or somebody's painted it badly and the paint's faded, but yeah that wing needs sorting out. And it has had a small accident that's not been registered. Somebody's put loads of filler in it. You can see that the light doesn't fit properly here as well. I think all the tabs and stuff are broken. Um, you can buy a full arch panel for these for 50 quid. So I will probably be cutting this arch out at some point and replacing it properly just to get rid of all that filler in there. Um, you can see the line there where it's been painted. That is, um, yeah, a masking line that somebody's masked off. Bang on the line. Um, it's it's a pretty horrific repair, to be honest with you. But yeah, you can see there's some rust coming through in the in the bottom corner, so um, it doesn't make sense to replace repair this panel. I may as well just put a, a complete panel in it. Um, so yeah, that's one of the issues. I've got a small knock coming from the back suspension. Um, apparently. They're quite common for the, the rear shock absorbers knocking on the, on the Hawkeye impressors. The guy I bought it off, he was using it for sprint days occasionally. And um, he put an uprated anti-roll bar on the back to try and eliminate some of the understeer that these cars get. And he says that since he put the roll bar on, it's been knocking, which would suggest to me that the shock is maybe nearly like, well, given up. So yeah, that's something I need to look at. Um, there's a little bit of rust coming through on this arch as well down at the bottom on the inside of the door here. So yeah, I, I don't know whether I'll maybe buy, just buy two, two repair panels and get the whole back end re-sprayed. The car's just shy of 130,000 miles. Um, it does have full dealership service history up until 110, I think it is. Um, so it's been really well looked after. Obviously, the uh, the guy that had it originally, he had it up until he, he he had an accident in it, and he and then sold it on to the guy that I bought it off. And it was really well looked after up until then. I'd like to tidy it up and get it kind of back to its former glory. I don't really plan on modifying it at all, unless you know, like I might possibly upgrade stuff as it breaks but um i just want to keep it quite reliable and nice um like i mentioned it's it's 270 brake so it it fairly shifts for a big like big estate car the the few things that made it 270 brake was it had the pro drive exhaust
the uh, this one has got a Cobra Sports Cat in it. I don't think they originally came with a Cobra Sports Cat. I think that's been put in afterwards. So under the bonnet is the 2.5 Boxer engine. Yeah, 2.5 turbo. The only difference I think between this and the WRX is the, the freer flowing exhaust. I think, I'm not totally sure if the intercooler is slightly wider and you can probably see the pro drive pipe down there. They, they changed some of these pipes um, to stop the the pipes expanding and there's a few other little bits i i'll be honest I, I don't know the ins and outs of it yet because i had no idea what a gb270 was until <laughs> until i saw it pop up um i quickly googled it and realized that it was a one of a one one of 100 model and i just went and got it and i i don't i haven't done enough research to know the ins and outs of it but from what i can gather is it's got a fr free of flowing exhaust it's they they map the standard ecu at pro drive and they change a few of the pipes so they've um they've Change some of the pipes to stop them expanding more yeah and a few little bits and pieces basically to give it a bit more power i don't know the ins and outs of it hopefully in a future video i'll, I'll update with date you with a bit more information it's pretty quick <laughs> for, for, for what it is Honestly, I'm so over the moon with it. I couldn't be happier. That is my GB270 Impreza. Hopefully I'll be able to give you a bit more detail on it when I've had a little bit more research into it. But yeah, from what I can gather, it's 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 quite a rare model. It's only, They only made a hundred of them. Um, it's the fastest version of the estate in the Hawkeye. So yeah, I'm over the moon. <laughs> couldn't be happier with it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be my daily for a while. I want to keep it quite reliable. So my plan is just to fix up all the little niggly problems on it um, and just drive it and use it um, hopefully hopefully enjoy some videos on it and yeah catch you in the next one peace out <laughs>